Now, a wrestler's theme is one of the most important elements of their character. Over the years, there have been some iconic entrance themes that have been insanely popular over the years. Conversely, there have been those themes that have been used once or twice, then never used again. This often comes down to the theme not hitting the mark and the wrestler in question or WWE management wanting to go in a different direction with the theme. But which ones were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the most rarest one-off WWE entrance themes never used again. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10. Brock Lesnar – Enforcer when Brock Lesnar made his WWE debut after WrestleMania 18 in 2002, it was clear that they wanted Lesnar to be the next big thing in the company. Everything about Lesnar was working. He was a tremendous wrestler and he was already having great matches just a few weeks into his WWE run. He also had Paul Heyman by his side, meaning that Heyman was delivering amazing promo work, making Lesnar appear to be the biggest star on the planet. But there was one issue with Lesnar's presentation, and it was his theme song. When Lesnar debuted, he would use a theme titled Enforcer. It featured the iconic intro that Lesnar's current theme has, but it was followed with a generic beat that did little to represent what Lesnar's character was. Thankfully, WWE quickly amended the theme, and the theme song now known as The Next Big Thing was born. This would be a theme which Lesnar would use for the rest of his trailblazing career. It's a perfect theme song that composer Jim Johnson truly hit the mark on. Number 9. Titus O'Neil – Let Me Show You How A Titus O'Neil solo run in 2014 is often forgotten about by fans as it never led to anything too meaningful. WWE decided to break up the popular duo known as Primetime Players and this would see Titus turn on longtime friend Darren Young. Titus would now have a brand new attitude as a heel and he would have a brand new theme song to match his renewed attitude. He would debut a song titled Let Me Show You How composed by CFOs and to CFOs credit, it was an above average theme song that actually suited Titus rather well. The theme song would be short-lived though as Titus's heel push was eventually cancelled and they decided to reform the primetime players back again in 2015. Number 8 Dean Ambrose – Lunatic Rage When The Shield disbanded in 2014, both Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins needed new theme songs if Roman Reigns was going to exclusively use The Shield theme moving forward. For Ambrose, the first theme he used for his babyface solo run would be titled Lunatic Rage, and it would be incredibly similar to the one that he would actually use long term. The main difference is that it had a much more rock and roll sound to it. Now, although it sounded somewhat generic, fans were positive about the theme and it felt like it was an appropriate theme song for Ambrose. According to Ambrose, during a 2017 interview on Talk is Jericho, he liked the initial theme. Well, he said like four seconds of it. That four seconds was most likely the intro, which was reused for Ambrose's second theme song, Retaliation. And a raucous reception! This would be the theme that Ambrose would stick with for the rest of his WWE career. Number 7. The Rock – Know Your Role – Method Man version During the build to WrestleMania 16, The Rock debuted a new theme that he would use just one single time. This new theme song would sample his Know Your Role theme, but it would have Method Man rapping on the song. WWE had no intentions of making the theme the new permanent theme for The Great One, and the only reason they used it was to promote an upcoming WWE CD. Yet even though the song is over two decades old, the song is incredibly popular and fans often class it as a forgotten gem when it comes to WWE themes. Number 6. Eric Rowan – Sheep Herder But WWE rather strangely decided to give Eric Rowan a solo run as a babyface in 2014, and although this run didn't achieve anything of note, it did produce an underrated gem of a theme song from Jim Johnston. Rowan's theme song for a singles run will be titled Sheep Herder, and it was a mellow folk instrumental with a bass that incorporated the banjo. The theme song was well received by fans and it continues to be a favourite of fans on social media. 
The theme song on YouTube has over 5 million views, which is a fantastic achievement for such a short-lived theme. Number 5. Hulk Hogan Ravishing Hulk Hogan's Real American is the definition of a perfect theme song. It fits Hogan and everything Hogan's character represented perfectly. However, before he debuted Real American, and he also had Eye of the Tiger, Hogan would use a theme song by Jim Steinman, and some fans say that Steinman's theme is equally as strong as Real American. Steinman's theme is quintessentially 80s, and Steinman did a great job in getting across what Hogan's character was about during the time. The song itself actually ended up being sampled by Bonnie Tyler for a first hit song, Ravishing. Whenever Hogan fans hear the Bonnie Tyler track, they get fond memories of growing up as a Hulkamaniac. Number 4. Batista Monster When Batista turned on Triple H in 2005, he could no longer use the Evolution theme song that fans had become accustomed to. Batista would use the theme song titled Monster, and it was composed by the brilliant Jim Johnston. The theme had a strong instrumental beat and is often associated with Batista's first world title win at WrestleMania 21. But shortly after WrestleMania 21, Batista would debut I Walk Alone by Saliva as his entrance theme, and the theme is considered to be one of the greatest theme songs in WWE history. Interestingly, when Batista returned to WWE in 2014, he was actually considering debuting a new theme song. This theme song would see rapper RZA perform an updated version of this theme, however the idea was shot down by WWE and they insisted that the former world champion keep the iconic I Walk Alone theme. Number 3. The Undertaker Buried Souls of WrestleMania 15 now, The Undertaker went through a number of theme songs during the Attitude Era, and one of the rarest was the one he used at WrestleMania 15 for his Hell in a Cell match against the Big Boss Man. Allow the purity of evil to guide you. The theme song would act as the debut of the Ministry theme, but it was slightly different from the one he would use on a full-time basis. The intro was much longer, and it sounded slightly altered in the middle portion of the song. WWE clearly felt that the intro was far too long and decided to cut the theme down to an appropriate time length. Number 2. Eric Bischoff Back in Black ACDC Eric Bischoff's debut on Raw in 2002 is one of the most shocking debuts in WWE history. Nobody saw it coming as Bischoff had attempted to put WWE out of business during the Monday Night Wars. It was truly a strange sight seeing Bischoff and McMahon hugging on the top of the Raw stage and the moment was made even better by Jim Ross's rage fuel rant on commentary. Now it's a common misconception from fans that Eric Bischoff debuted in the WWE with his tremendous I'm Back theme song, but this actually isn't the case. When Bischoff walked down on Raw in 2002, he actually used an ACDC song titled Back in Black. Bischoff would use this song on just the isolated occasion, and when he appeared on television again, he would use the I'm Back song that he would use for the rest of his time spent in WWE. Now, the reason that WWE didn't use the ACDC song was because of the copyright, and when the replay of Raw was aired following Bischoff's debut, the song was dubbed over. And number 1. Triple H – Game Time in late 2000, WWE and Triple H wanted to debut a brand new theme song. His My Time theme, whilst fantastic, was rather stale and it was time for a change. Now, following ditching My Time as his theme, Triple H debuted a theme song titled Game Time. This was a theme song that Triple H would use extremely briefly for the Survivor Series and Armageddon pay-per-views in 2000. The theme song was in essence an instrumental version of My Time, but the beat was slightly altered. It was a great theme, but it was nothing in comparison to the theme song that the former champion would debut just a few weeks later. As in early 2001, Triple H would debut the game by Motorhead as his theme song, and this would be his theme song for the rest of his legendary career. But there you have it folks, 10 of the most rarest one-off WWE entrance themes never used again. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.